Creole Parametric 4.0, Lesson 6, Part 3. The last component for this lesson is going to be the swivel. So you want to make sure that you use your proper setup. And in our configuration, we can import the textbook file, textbook pro that we saved as a config. We'll turn that off. And we'll start a new part. Let's give it a truncated name. View. Turn on my tags here. And if we want, we can even set a color at this point. You'll notice this, this little tiny dialog pops up. Usually you can select here and select on your color and it'll do the same thing, but you've got to watch for that dialog. If you hit middle mouse button, the dialog will go away. So we're going to do a revolved feature. Select on the right datum. We're going to put a center line for the axis of revolution down the middle of it. And I'm going to move it down here so that we have a lot of room to sketch in the first quadrant. And up here, I want the center and ends arc. Don't go here. That makes an unwanted assumption. It's a little bit beyond. And our lines are going to form a small neck. Now, one of the things I want to make sure I do, I don't want these two to be equal. I can always change it. It's not a big deal. but if you want to do that, you've got to make sure you pick the proper constraint and delete it. See how I made it exactly the same? It would have been better to sketch it a little bit bigger, but you need to learn how to do that anyway. So our line continues down, and we have a little bit of a step here at the end. Again, careful not to get something equal. Go on the bottom over, and all the way to the top. Middle mouse button twice. Now, I'm going to click on dimension. I'm going to select the bottom here and the center point. And I'm going to select the line and go over here. I know the dimension's already there, but it's the same as moving it, like so. And I noticed I didn't get my diameter dimensions. So I'm going to put my cursor here and see what's happening. For some reason, I don't have my center line. I'm going to go put another one in here and see what happens. I can put more than one center line in there. Okay. So something's going wrong with my mouse, or at my finger, probably. And by putting the center line back in there, I get a bunch of diameter dimensions, which is what I want. Now, one of the dimensions that's missing is from the bottom here to this little step, middle mouse button. And now I have all the proper dimensions, the dimensioning scheme. Middle mouse button activates this select. I'm going to pick on this radius and turn it into a, the proper diameter. And that should give me all the dimension I need. Now I can move these if I want. I can do that later also. Clean up the sketch. So. These are the proper dimensioning, this is the proper dimensioning scheme, but not the values. So I'll select everything and pick modify. Make sure you lock the scale. And I know that this 78 here is 0.4375 or close. Enter. OK. And now my dimensions are a lot closer to being the design dimensions. I know for a fact that some of these, uh, this is 1.5. This is 1.25. This one is 6. You want to change the longest one before you change this one here. This is 5.5. 5. 
I think this is 0.375, and the diameter is 0.5, like so. So I've got all my dimensions on here. You can check them. And I go down to my section. And it looks like I'm OK with the sizes. And again, you don't have to do all of them. If you get one of them off or you want to do a design change later, you do it in the model. You don't have to do it in the section here. Now rotate it a little bit. Right mouse button, check. And middle mouse button. Control D. I'm not sure if I got my color right here. Let's go back over to my color. Pick on it. I don't see it never took the last time. So I selected the color, then selected the name. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to rotate it like so. I'm going to put a hole through this end here. Model tab, hole. I'm going to select on this datum plane. And it's going to think it's going to be on there, but it doesn't know where it's going to be in space. And I'm going to take this drag handle and bring it over to the front. And the other drag handle I'm going to bring down here to my other datum plane. Oh, it disappeared again. That's interesting. Let's undo that one and see what happens. Let's drag this over. And let's make sure this goes through all in both directions, like so. And take my drag handle again and see what happens. Hopefully pick it the correct one. I did this time. It's previewing the hole. I know the diameter is supposed to be half an inch, so that one's OK. And I know this dimension from the back is supposed to be 0.5625, or close. But on the placement here, I don't want it offset at all from this direction. So I want it right along the datum plane, center of the datum plane. And that looks like it. So middle mouse button, I've got the hole. Now, I've got a couple of things before we add a cosmetic thread. I'm going to select my edges. If you select the wrong thing, pick it again. It'll go away. And round. And I won't bother to change the sizes. All right. Now, one of the things I think I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off my datum planes so I can see it better, like so. And I'm going to put in a different feature. This is a cosmetic feature. So this is cosmetic thread. It's really a quilt or a surface that represents a thread. It's not a real thread. It has information embedded in it. Now it's asking certain things. And on the bottom here, it's asking for the threaded surface. Pick the surface you want to thread. As soon as you do that, the depth here is needed. And you want to start from someplace. And we're going to start here. And by doing that, you can see it goes along. And we want ours to go about four inches out, like so. And the other thing that's good is to always turn off your, let's say, let's turn off uh, no hidden line. Let's make it no hidden line, like so. And check. And then pick somewhere. And you'll see it becomes a magenta quilt. That's a surface. And let's make sure all my tree filters are on. And when this is shaded, you can't see it. So that's why I wanted to show it. Now I'm going to go back in there and <coughs> select the edit the definition of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And go to the options and the properties. And the properties here over to the book. We're going to type in these properties. So threads per inch is 13. The form is UNC. 
and the class is 2. And it's ex 2. And external placement, no metric. That's kind of an odd one. It's been there for years. I'm not sure why. And that should do it. Check. So that information is embedded here. If I go right mouse button and information, you'll see that displayed. The dimensions, the minor diameter, and the length of the cosmetic thread. And down here it shows all the other information that you need. So we built the thread in there for information, not for an actual modeling of a thread, which would take a lot of data to regenerate all the time. So the last thing is to go over the model player. So if we click on Tools, Model Player, and we can back this off to the very beginning. Now, I don't have my datum planes on, so I think I'll turn those on. And when I click through the model, we'll see the planes and the coordinate system and then our first feature. And we can show our dimensions and we can get information about those dimensions or that feature. Next one is the hole and the other one is the threads. Now here again, you'll see that there's oops, next one afterwards, that's the round. And there's the cosmetic thread, show dimensions four inches, and then the minor diameter is here. Feature information, and it goes back into the dialog that shows the size of the cosmetic feature and also the information for the thread itself. And I'm going to turn that off. And that completes lesson six, part three.